voted Lansing's best repair shop, Professional Fleet Services can meet all your repair needs quickly and courteously. Services include brake repair, steering and suspension, air conditioning, electrical and maintenance services. Schedule an appointment today with a shop that has an A-plus rating from the Better Business Bureau. Call Professional Fleet Services Monday through Friday at 517-316-7999. Hi, my name is Sam. I'm the owner of Professional Fleet Services. And today I'd like to talk to you guys about air conditioning. Um, many times my customers come in and they think they can charge on air conditioning, buy one of those kits from the parts store, and do a recharge in their vehicle. And I kind of want to discuss with you why that doesn't work most of the times. Uh, you, you'll find probably 30 to 50% of the time it'll actually work. The rest of the time it doesn't. And there's at least five good reasons why that doesn't work. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to hook um, a machine up to the vehicle and I'll show you how it's done professionally and then explain to you why it doesn't work with the cans. What you're going to do is you're going to have two hoses, a red hose and a blue hose. Uh, the blue hose is for your low side, which is the smaller fitting on the car. The red hose is for your high side, which is for the larger fitting on the vehicle. So you've got to locate your, your fittings. All right, so we're going to hook this hose on. Make sure it's in there nice and tight. Turn it, crank it down. Um, the kits you'll find in the store, they won't have a valve that opens and closes. Um, it would be well advised, if you are going to do an AC recharge on your vehicle at your own house, to buy a set of AC manifold gauges. It'll basically be two gauges with three hoses on it. And the yellow hose will be what hooks to your vacuum pump, which you'll need to vacuum the vehicle down with. And also, it'll be what you hook to your AC cans when you actually fill the vehicle with Freon once it's been vacuumed out. All right, so we're going to come over our gauges, as we've already said, and we're going to check our pressures. What we're going to do now is, after the uh, hoses are hooked up, we're going to, to a vacuum, remove the dirt, the debris, the air, everything out of the system, so we know it is completely empty. <clears throat> so we know how much to put back in. Um, we can make sure there's no debris, like I said before, in there. Um, and then, when it's under a vacuum, it's going to actually pull down to a negative 30. So basically you're taking almost more air out than what there is there in the first place. We're going to then let that sit about 5 to 15 minutes to vacuum down to below zero. Once it's done vacuuming and it hits the zero mark, we're going to shut it off and we're going to let it sit 10 to 15 minutes. If the vehicle can last 10 to 15 minutes without having any loss of pressure that you uh, removed, the pressure that's been supplied, or it's there, still there in the vehicle. Once you vacuum it down, that vacuum pressure is not lost. We know there's no leaks, and we know at that point that we can go ahead and charge the system up. All right, so at this point, uh, we verified it's not leaking. Uh, we're ready to recharge the vehicle or fill it up with Freon. So what we're gonna do next is we're going to insert some green dye, which will go in the system, and it will stay there for years to come. If the vehicle ever leaks Freon out from this day forward, 10 years from now, that dye is going to come out wherever the leak is. What that's going to do for us is enable us to locate a leak on the fly if this thing all leaks out tomorrow, the next day, or a year from now, we can take an ultraviolet light or even your eyes will see the green dye and help us find it quickly. Whereas there's no dye in there, we wouldn't know where the leak was and we had to basically redo this whole step all over again just to put dye back in the vehicle to find out where the leak is, which then takes an extra day or two of driving the vehicle, which is very inconvenient. So at our shop, we always install dye on every single AC recharge or refill that we do for that reason. So at this point, we're going to um, put the dye in and we're going to start to fill it up with the proper amount of Freon required from the vehicle. All right, so we've back in the system down and in order to put Freon back in the vehicle, it needs to be under a vacuum. That way you can pull the Freon either out of the can or out of the machine, the tank, into the vehicle. If it's under pressure, it's going to blow right back in your face and blow up in your ear, and the, EP, the EPA is not too happy about that when that happens. So, um, with the under vacuum, it's ready to receive the Freon. Also, since we went through and vacuumed it, and we filled it, we're going to be able to know exactly how much to put back into the vehicle. There will be a sticker somewhere on the vehicle that tells you how much Freon the vehicle should take. If you don't have that answer, research it and look it up. If you put too much in, you can blow um, gaskets, O-rings, or parts blow large holes in them and cause major leaks. Too little and it's not going to charge on a warm day for you and it may also over uh, work the compressor and cause the bearings and seals to go bad because it's cycling on and off so much so rapidly. 
So we definitely want to put the right amount of freedom back in every single time, which is why we pull this down to zero, so we know where to start and how much we have in when we're done. That way, if you run into a problem, it's not a freon-related issue where it's got the right pressures, the right freon, but the vehicle still doesn't cool right, that gives us an idea of where to go from there. If we have the wrong amount of freon in, we will totally misdiagnose what's wrong with the vehicle and just assume it's a recharge issue when it's actually a mechanical or electronic issue that we're dealing with. So we're going to basically find out where the sticker is, we're going to find out how much freon to put in the vehicle, fill it up with that amount, and then recheck our pressures and make sure there's no leaks after we're done with this. Alright, so whether you're using the can or you're using the machine to put the freon back in the vehicle, um, you're going to select the charge, you're going to put the correct amount in, and you're going to start to fill the vehicle. If you're using a can, you're going to take the yellow hose on the manifold gauges. This is your manifold gauges, and there's the yellow hose. You're going to hook the yellow hose to the can, and then obviously your red and blue hose is already hooked to the vehicle. At that time, you're going to have to figure out how many ounces are on the can versus how many ounces or pounds the vehicle takes. Convert that number over and make sure you have exactly the right amount of ounces in the vehicle. As I said before, too much causes major problems, too little causes major problems. So you're going to put your free end in the vehicle, put your dye in the vehicle. Uh, if you don't have um, a way to put dye in, a lot of times you can buy the little kits to squeeze at least an ounce or so of dye in the vehicle. So if it does come to a shop later, they can easily find a leak for you as well. So that's how you're going to do that. We're going to fill it up, put our dye in, hit continue, and our dye is going in, and our free end will begin to charge and fill the car up. And I like to do this with the vehicle off, that way if there's a leak you can hear it. Whereas if you do it with the vehicle running, you're not going to hear a leak. It may not even know it's leaking out. Um, this will give us a chance to find a leak that might be present that you would not otherwise notice until you started searching top to bottom for a leak, which you might miss in the first place. So I like to do it with the vehicle off so I can actually hear if a leak is present. Alright, so the vehicle's filled up with Freon. We got two pounds in there, which is what it's supposed to take. We're real close to that. We're going to, at this point, turn our um, gauges off so there's no pressure feeding back through here. Uh, as well as if you're doing it at home with the manifold gauges, you want to turn those off. And you'll still be able to see the pressure that's in the vehicle behind that because the pressure still goes through the gauge and reads just you're closing your valves off so that nothing sprays out or um, feeds back through and uh, so that it might leak or cause a problem. So always turn gauges off and then now we're ready to fire the vehicle up and test our pressures and see where they're at so we know if we're done or if there's further issues to deal with here. Alright, so we fired the vehicle up and what we're doing now is we want to put the AC on max AC, turn the fans on high, we want to make sure that the compressor itself is engaged and spinning, the outer piece of the clutch as well as the, fan, or the uh, pulley, make sure both of those are spinning. <clears throat> Then make sure your cooling fans, your electronic fans are on. Whenever your AC comes on, your fans should be on and your compressor should be on. If one of those two are not on, you've got a problem. And it usually is going to be an electronic issue or mechanical issue, not a freon issue. So at this point, we've got the um, AC turned on. We're now going to go check our pressures and make sure our pressures are where they should be when the vehicle is at idle. Alright, so we're full of freon. we checked our pressures. Like I said before, the closer to 30 you are, the colder the car is going to get. The closer to 150 you are, the colder the car is going to get. If you find out that any of those readings are off, you've got a problem um, inside the system or there's an electronic problem with the system. So at the duct, you want to take a little thermometer if possible and put it in there and check your duct temperature coming out of the vents. You ideally want a temperature somewhere below 50 degrees coming out of those vents because when it mixes with 90 to 100 degree heat, you basically cut that in half and that's how it's going to be in the vehicle. So ideally you want to have it below 50, preferably in the low 40s, if you can get in the 30s, awesome. You have a very good uh, cooling vehicle even when it's 95 plus degrees out. If you happen to have it in the 60s or 70s, it's not going to cool very well at all when it's hot. It will help to remove the um, like stickiness feeling of the humidity out of the vehicle, but it's not going to cool and be nice cold air for you. So that pretty much wraps up the video uh, of how to do these uh, 100 AC recharge on a vehicle. And I kind of give you some helpful hints. If you do want to try this at, um, yourself at your home uh, with one of the cans, it does kind of give you an idea of where to go with that. If that doesn't work for you, uh, you can bring it to us. We'll be happy to take care of you. Thank you.